Hey everybody, welcome to another video. I paid £60 for this Xbox One X, one terabyte console. I bought this off eBay and the reason that I purchased this was because the description was rather detailed but rather interesting. The seller states that it has had a prior repair attempt but claims that it wasn't done by them and that they don't know what actually happened during the initial repair attempt. So I was kind of intrigued so I thought I'd buy it and do a video on it. Hopefully I can fix it and actually make some money on it. But it's got the beep on beep off issue apparently which is a fairly common issue where you'll turn the console on and it will just go straight back off and won't fully boot up. So let's pop over that to the listing description and we'll see what it says. Right we are, so here's the listing. So 40 Microsoft Xbox One X, console only, no hard drive, power issue. So it does have a missing hard drive here. But if we take a look at the description here, I'll zoom in just so as you can see it's on a mobile. So Xbox One X, console only, no hard drive, wiring or caddy, missing screws. Console turns on and then goes straight back off. The problem is solely within the motherboard as I've tested the power supply, internal fan and Blu-ray drive. Not sure why you would test the fan and Blu-ray drive if it goes straight off, but never mind. Uh, I've no idea what the previous owner did before the issue, but it's missing the following. One terabyte hard drive, hard drive wiring, hard drive caddy, black security screws, silver torque screws. You can buy the hard drive SATA cable and cable with screws on eBay. I was going to buy them myself, but due to not being able to fix it, I saw no point. Bloody, bloody, blada. And uh, yeah, it says that it's been fully cleaned and installed with brand new MX2 thermal paste. Hmm. MX2. Yeah. Anyway. So, yep. It says, forgot to put the rubber sleeve back on the Blu-ray drive, but we'll put it with the console. That is included. I haven't got it with me. It's downstairs in my kitchen. But, uh, yeah, according to the listing, it's a beep on beep off. And that it's had a prior repair attempt. Okay. So, overall, then, you can see it's, I mean, fairly scratched up, to be honest. The case isn't in the greatest of conditions. But I do have spare cases if need be. I do have a Project Scorpio case as well as a fair few standard Xbox One X cases and some, I think, Robot White cases and some Gold Rush Limited Edition cases as well. I might put a Gold Rush Limited Edition case with this. Mm, I'll have to see. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can get it fixed. But if you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications and that way you don't miss any future videos. And if you do want to support me in any way, there's a Patreon link in the video description. Patreon members get early access to videos as well as Twitch Prime subscribers. If you head over to Twitch and become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking an Amazon Prime account and then subscribing to my Twitch channel for free. And also you can become a channel member by clicking on the join button down below the video. But with that being said, let's get into this repair. So on the overhead cam, let's have a look. Let's see what you're going on. So I'm going to plug in the power cable. I won't plug the HDMI cable in for now. Let's just see what goes on. Okay, it is an instant beep on beep off. The button's a bit stiff, but there's no screws in the case, which, you know, that's to be expected because the case is loose. So, yeah. Okay. So it is a beep on and beep off. Let's just have a look on the inside. If I can ever get the thing off. Man, I hate it when they do this. I hate the Xbox One X design. They're just not great at all. <laughs> it's supposed to lift up. Come on. I will get it out. Come on. There we go. Thank you. Right, it's okay. So I can clearly see that the hard drive is missing. That's fine. So let's get this apart then. Right, okay. So it has definitely been cleaned. So. 
so apparently the power supply has been checked actually but let's just check it ourselves make sure it's outputting 12 volts so just up here in the top corner you can see we've got the multimeter up on the screen I'm going to go into voltage mode 11.7 that seems a little bit low hmm I'm not expecting to see that much voltage drop across the probes the probes are not that long so I wouldn't expect to see that much voltage drop so if I grab one of my own power supplies hmm that's rather interesting I wonder if that's a multimeter thing I'm getting the same reading there all right well we've got a power supply here we may as well at least try it now so the console will turn on with no hard drive and no fan. It doesn't need those in order to power up. But because I've got the power supply here, I might as well at least try it now. Okay, it's still a beep on and beep off. That's fine. So you should always try a non-good power supply anyway, to be honest, if you've got power issues, or at least whenever possible. So that must just be a so that must just be a voltage drop thing across the leads or something to do with the power supply. So let's just continue to disassemble fun fact did you know that microsoft actually put a placeholder for an m.2 in these just there so an m.2 ssd the dev kit i've worked on a dev kit and the dev kit's actually got the m.2 but they actually had the placeholder on the original xbox as well i thought that was pretty cool one day i might try and add a m2 ssd to it and just see if it works Let's just pop off the X clamp then. There we go. Not a bad application in terms of thermal paste. Right, so with a beep on beep off, that could be pretty much anything. So what's happening is the console's turning on. And when the console turns on, it goes through a certain set of self checks. Sort of like a post on a computer where you get the BIOS screen and it checks your hard drives and things like that. Uh, so it's sort of like a power on self test. And if you detect anything at all, any issues, you don't get an error message on the screen. Instead, it'll just shut off. So if, for example, it detects that there's an issue with the HDMI circuit, then it could shut off. Or if it detects there's an issue with the power supply, it could shut off. If there's an issue with one of the voltage rails, again, it could shut off. And yeah, that's the problem with the beep on beep off is it can literally be anything. You can get something really, really obvious where you've got a little bit of corrosion on the board or you've got a expanding capacitor or a burn capacitor or a very obvious burn mark on the board where you've had a capacitor go bad or an IC might have gone bad or something. Sometimes it's visible, but a lot of the time with the beep on beep off issue, it's not visible. It's just that one component has failed in such a way where you can't actually tell, at least not by eye. So it could be the RAM, it could be the APU, it could be the hard drive. Or, well, not in this case because there's no hard drive there, but it will boot up without one. It could be the hard drive circuit, it could be the disk drive circuit, it could be the HDMI encoder. You kind of get the drift. It can literally be one of a thousand things. It can literally be any component on the board has failed. And that board is... That board... Hmm. That component is critical and it's needed to actually power on. So it detects an issue and shuts off. So yeah, let's just start running some tests and see if we can figure this out, shall we? And I can see we've got some signs that we might have had some flux or something around here. So I'm thinking this has possibly had some work done to the HDMI port. And I'm not sure actually. Okay, yeah, that has had work done to the HDMI circuit. Uh, this is a HDMI input port, though, interestingly. So, not sure why. Let's start off around U21 here. So, U21 is a ESD boost IC. Um, basically, what that's responsible for is taking the power rails for the HDMI circuit and boosting them, and also for ESD protection as well. So let's just run some tests here. So I'm going to go into continuity mode. And actually, let's use diode. Diode mode is going to give a much more accurate and much faster reading. So I'll pop the red probe on a ground point. In this case, I'll use the port just off to the side. And I'll just, well, I'll basically permanently ground it just like that. Without pushing those tabs in because we don't want to damage the port. Whoops. <laughs> Maybe not. I'll use the USB port instead, that's uh, 
probably a little bit more secure. So let's just test some components around here because this is a common cause of a beep on beep off. Oh, let's get rid of the beeper. Shut up, multimeter. E. Okay, interesting, straight away. Hmm, this is going to look like this is a little bit staged right now because that is short. 0 0.04 volt drop to ground, so that's got basically no voltage drop to ground. So let me just take a random capacitor somewhere. So somewhere around here. This will do. This is actually the Southbridge area. So as you can see here, we get 0.24 volt drop to ground there. That's a low impedance line because it's probably going to be a 1.1 or 1.8 volt line, something like that. If we're getting a very, very low reading, so in this case C25, 0 0.04 volts, so 0 0.4, 0 0.04 volts drop to ground, that's a very low reading. If we go into ohms mode here, you'll see we're getting a reading of 128 ohms. Now, I'm expecting somewhere in the region of between 3 and 10,000 ohms there. Now here's the problem, that doesn't necessarily mean that this chip here is bad. That could also be a case of this chip is bad. So this is the TDP158 and this is a DisplayPort and HDMI read driver. So basically you can buy these from Mouser, DigiKey, AliExpress, all of that sort of stuff. They are out of stock on Mouser and DigiKey as far as I know at the minute. But I do have quite a few of these. But this, if we look at C50 here, this is going to be linked directly to that as well. So we're going to get the same reading there as we do on C25. And the reason for that is because, like I said, if we try and get them both in frame here. There we go. If we take the probes and we test from there to there, you'll see we get dead short because that is connected directly to there. So it could be anything on the HDMI circuit which is causing this issue. And I'm gonna say that this is likely gonna be causing the entire issue with the beep on beep off. Now, one problem with this is you can't buy this U21 IC, or we can, but I think they're around about $40 per chip. Yeah, you heard me right, $40 per chip. That's more expensive than the HDMI encoder for the PlayStation 5. And that was a quote from a direct supplier. That wasn't no third-party AliExpress supplier. That wasn't any third-party seller on eBay. That was direct manufacturer quotes. And I did quote that a couple of weeks ago because we have just found these, but they are incredibly expensive. So I'm hoping that this chip hasn't failed. So the best thing to do here, rather than risking damaging that chip, is just remove the HDMI encoder or the HDMI read driver, read timer, whatever you want to call it. It's a HDMI encoder. It's responsible for taking the HDMI signals, muxing them and then sending them out to the HDMI port. So this is a very thick board. So I'm going to use some hot air at 480 degrees Celsius to remove this chip with no nozzle. I don't want to use a nozzle because I want to spread the heat out evenly. I'm going to preheat the board before moving the airflow around a little bit. So because this is a VGA chip, that U21, I don't want to take that off unless absolutely necessary. So I'll remove this chip first. That substance that I've just added is called flux and that helps the solar to flow. The flux I use, personally, is Kingbo RMA218. Okay, and there we go. So that's that chip removed. And uh, let's test this again in diode mode. 
We'll go back into dial mode, red code on ground, and we're going to test C50. Point 0.19 volts. That is a good reading. The reason that's a good reading, even though it's low, is because the board is red hot. The board is piping hot right now, and that's going to affect the resistance on the board, and it's going to change the readings. So if we go into resistance mode, you'll see that this resistance is going to be all over the place. I've just knocked a capacitor over with the hot air. How have I done that? So yeah, 2.5k, 2.6k and climbing. When that board is cooled down, that is going to give me a normal reading, which is absolutely fantastic. But now I need to sort out this capacitor. There we go. So while the board's still warm, I'm just gonna clean up. I like to try and clean as I go. So all I'm gonna do is just use some isopropyl alcohol on a toothbrush and just scrub that flux away from the board. And C1264, in case you're wondering, there's not meant to be anything there. That's normal for that to be missing. It's just a placeholder pad for an extra capacitor. But it is no stuff according to the schematics. So next I'm just going to replace the solder that's on the board at the minute with some leaded solder. I'll say replace, I'm just going to add leaded solder because that's going to change the mixture of the solder that's on there. So I'll add some flux again. And then I'm just going to re in these. And there we go. So next I'm going to grab a brand new HDMI re-driver. The official name is a re-driver, so I'll call it a re-driver. If you are looking to buy any of these, if you need a HDMI re-driver, I do have some available for sale. I sell them on eBay, and I'm one of the cheapest suppliers on eBay. But if you'd rather buy them direct and save some money, just get in touch. Head over to Discord, we've got a Discord channel. Head over to Discord and I can sell them in packs of five for £40. So that works out at £8 per chip and that includes postage in the UK. So if you do need to buy any, just let me know. So now I'm just going to solder this chip back down. So pin number one is on the bottom right hand side on this. Notice I'm not putting the chip down until the solder's molten. That's because I want to reduce heat stress. And it's about to start to flow. Three, two, one. There we go. Drop that in place. That should be perfectly aligned. I've just overheated my flux a little bit, so it's ended up as a liquid. I'm just going to press down on the chip and reflow it. And it's just gone out of bloody line. Ah! Never mind. The flux will reform into a solid. Or rather, a, like, uh, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> it'll, it'll reform into its original viscosity. The same posh. Viscosity. Right, so this is slightly out of line there because I did slightly slip with the iron. But if I just get rid of this excess solder because otherwise it's just going to suck back up. There we go. Okay. So I'll just flow it again and just reposition it. There we go. Wow, I use an aluminium plunger and that is hot right now. <laughs> Alright, let's just clean up these joints. One little tip if you want to get a good contact on every pad, if you just flick your soldering iron up like that and then just run across it, then what you're doing is transferring solder to the edge of the chip as well. And there is a contact point on the edge of the chip. Let's 
There we go. That should give me really, really nice joints. Not those type of joints. Solder joints. Anyway. Okay, let's just clean this up. So, isopropyl alcohol. And let's just dry that off using rapid dry technology. There we go. Beautiful. So let's just inspect this. Oh, look at those joints. Look at those joints. There we go. Nicely lined up. Oh, yeah. Right, the board is still warm, but let's just see what kind of reading we get now in resistance mode. 4.45k. And increasing. Yep. That's what I would expect. Let's go into diode mode. 0.25. Yeah, that is absolutely beautiful. Same as this cap here. 0.25. Excellent. That is reading perfect. Let's just test the rest of these. 0.55. Excellent. 0.58. 0.56. 0 0.57. 0.57. Yep, all of that is reading absolutely fine. And pins 19 and 18. Excellent, fantastic. The HDMI circuit now appears to be working. All right, so I'm just going to get this ready to give it a test. And hopefully, this is going to work now. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Does it turn on? Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, no. Oh, ha, ha. It doesn't turn on still. Wow, that's a shame. That's a shame. Okay, back to the drawing board it is. So, one thing we've got to think here is that the HDMI encoder, that had definitely blown. That was definitely bad. So if we, we can test this all day long now and it's going to give us a good reading on the HDMI encoder and on the ESDIC. So C25.259 on diode mode and C50 is going to be the same as well. Well, it would be if I got a contact. Yeah, so the encoder was definitely bad that is a given you know that is obvious but now what we need to think is what else has gone and why one of the causes of that chip blowing is a bad hdmi port so it could have been dropped it could have been knocked or anything like that another cause could very well be that a thunderstorm has caused it to take out the chip and that it's also taken out something else so we need to try and figure out what it's taken out and also why let's get some test probes hooked up so i'm going to pop a probe on ground there and i'm going to use my bench power supply to basically get this thing to power up i know i'm doing this backwards i've got a black probe on a red lead and then i've got a red crocodile clip on a black lead oh no don't worry it's still fine. I'm going to pop a probe in there. And I'm going to put 12 volts on my power supply. So I've got a bench power supply. It's a Rockseed RS305P. There's a link in the video description to that. Not sponsored, but it is a fantastic power supply. So realistically now, when I attempt to power this on, it should turn on. Or it should try. Yep. So it does attempt to turn on, which means that I've got a working power supply now. So now what I can do is, in conjunction with the power supply, I can also use the multimeter to test for some power rails. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get rid of my black probe. And I'm going to tilt a few people by using a green probe. But the reason for that is quite simple. I want to daisy chain my ground point. So I'll daisy chain my ground point, that means I've got a ground there for the multimeter as well. And now if I go into voltage mode, you're going to see on the screen, or at least you should, that I'm getting 12 volt output. And I am fantastic. 
And now what I can do is just test for some power rails on the board because I've got 12 volts coming in and that should be generating some of the standby voltage rails. So I'll zoom in just a little bit here. Let's just test a few areas. So we've got V underscore SB1P1 on this test point here. Let's try and pair it on. And we get 1.1 volt there. Okay. So 1.1 volts on SB1P1 when we turn it on. We get 1P8 standby, which is 1.8 volts, and we get that there. Do we get 5 volt? We do. 1.8 volts from the from the south bridge. We get, okay. VBAT, 1.8 volts, yep. 3.3 volts. Ah. We're missing the 3.3 volt rail. No, we're not. That's not a standby rail. Never mind. <laughs> okay, well, ignore everything I've, I've taught you up until this point. SOC 1P8. Yep, okay, we get that there. Mem IO. Yep, that activates CPU V core. That does enable. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to get a reading off that, though. I'm actually not sure where I'm meant to get 3 volts for standby rails, to be honest. That's a little bit bendy, isn't it? Okay, we do get 3.3 volts on the HDMI encoder, though. I'm not sure if I'm meant to get 3.3 volts there until, until it turns on. But I do get 3.3 up here. So I think the 3.3 volt rail is active. I'm not sure if there's actually a test point on here. For 3.3 volts. Everything appears to be checking out fine. We get 5 volts there. Okay. Well. It's not looking too clever for this. I think it's time to hook up the thermal camera. And just see if anything gets warm. Okay. So a little bit of a jump cut. Because I had a customer come in with a PS5. And they needed a quick HDMI port change. So I did that while they waited outside. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be using the thermal camera just to see if I can pick anything up. I've got this new thermal camera which was sent to me free of charge. So I, I'm i not being paid to do a review or anything like that. I am going to do a review on this. But technically I have been paid because I've been sent this for free. This is a Unity professional thermal camera. It's a UTI712S. And it looks pretty good. It's not I've not used it yet, but I have turned it on and made sure it works and things like that. Well, I'm going to be doing a full review video and go through the features and stuff like that. But just for now, I'm just going to see if anything picks up on this. So there's my shiny new thermal camera. Looks great. And uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see if we can pick anything up. So my cables are everywhere now because, like I said, I did just have a customer walk in and or well, not walk in, but. He brought just a board only and you wanted a HDMI port swap, so basically there was no port on there, so I said, yep, yeah, I'll do it while, I'm, while, while you wait, and uh, I've just got that done, so I've just moved everything out of the way, but it is the same board. Okay, so I'll just wait for this to calibrate, uh, I'm just going to turn it on. Okay, the APU does start to get warm. We get a slight heat spot just in the top corner of this. Very slight heat spot there. Yeah, it doesn't even hit 45 degrees Celsius though. Um, and apparently the board is at 40 something degrees. It is incredibly hot in here today. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything get warm apart from the APU. I think this might have a dead APU. We get a really, really small heat spot, literally just here. Yeah, just there. There's a very small heat spot just there. Yeah, the APU is the only thing that even remotely heats up here. Oh, that sucks. Well, I think that's the end of it, to be honest with this one. The 
the APU getting warm, I'm not going to say for sure that it's going to be a dead APU, but the APU does get warm in one specific spot and then it just doesn't power on. The vaulted rails are present. The south bridge doesn't appear to even be getting warm and that should show some signs of heat when it first powers on. That absolutely sucks. I don't think I'm going to be able to fix this one, unfortunately. Um, it's part of the risk on eBay. Part of the risk on eBay. The HDMI encoder, the V-driver, whatever you want to call it, that was definitely dead. Um, that had definitely failed. So, yeah, we did pinpoint the initial issue. I think what might have happened with this is potentially it's suffered some sort of a surge some sort of a power surge through the hdmi and that's gone straight through to the apu uh that's the only thing i can think of which could have caused it it does appear as though the apu is dead uh we do get a heat spot in that one specific area briefly when we try and turn it on but yeah there's no other shorts showing the, the voltage rails are there and um yeah it's just one of them things so unfortunately this one is going to be a no fix it's going to end up in a big pile of donor board behind me and there is a few things I can use off the board, so I can use some of the chips off the board. I do need an ESDIC, so hopefully that's good. But uh, other than that, yeah, it's going to be a no fix. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. If you do want to organise a repair, you can do so by heading over to the website in the video description, consolefix.co.uk. Take you straight to my website where you can book in a repair. They're not all mal fixes. Most of the time they are fixable when we have a HDMI re-driver issue. But uh, unfortunately on the, in this situation, I think it's just too late and it just fried the board. Uh, that's my opinion. I could be wrong. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's a dead APU or do you think it's something else? Um, yeah, it sucks. It absolutely sucks, but it is what it is. If you do want to support me in any way, then there's a Patreon link in the video description. There's also a link to my Twitch account where you can... There's also a link to Twitch where you can become a Prime subscriber. Absolutely free if you've got Amazon Prime. It doesn't cost you a penny. It does massively help out the channel, though. And uh, there's also a channel membership option if you want to click on the Join button below the video. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and hit subscribe for more videos in the future. But until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.